Hello and welcome to this video and the topic of today's video is a sad one. I'd like to talk about Jeff Beck. I'm sure everyone's heard by now uh, that he's suddenly passed away um, and I thought it would be the right thing to do to come on and um, just share my thanks for Jeff Beck and um, the appreciation that I think all guitar players have for him. Um, so I'd just like to say first of all that um, there's actually only a few guitar players that um, I truly revere and that I really, really um, feel that my life would not be the same without. Of course, I, I appreciate many, many guitar players and many musicians, but there's definitely a small number of them that I feel that um, my life wouldn't really be the same without them. I mean, that's a pretty big thing to say about, about a, a musician, but for sure I think my life wouldn't be the same without there's probably four or five guitar players that are really in that category to me, and Jeff Beck is one of them. Um, everyone knows that he's the most unique player and that his um, lyricism and the way that he conducted himself, the way that he sculpted every phrase, um, was beyond anyone else. It, it was different to anyone, but, but no one else even got as far um, in their own stylistic development, really, as Jeff Beck. Um, of course, he's got his own unique way of doing it, but I think that you can make a case that no other guitar player has actually developed just their own voice in quite the same way or to the same degree that, that Jeff Beck did. Um, and um, in terms of what he represented to guitar players, um, the kind of role that he played and how he navigated through his career, um, the, the sort of archetype um, solo guitar player who was actually the leader of his own group. And it, it's very hard to think of uh, other guitar players who actually could play an entire concert just based around their solo playing. I mean, he he had he he was very um, he was very deep into composition, and it was all about you know the right melodies, the right material. But there was no singer, um, and it wasn't it wasn't as if the whole band played compositions where um, there were big arrangements. You know, it was all really just based on his solo instrumental voice as a guitar player. Yeah. Um, and a lot of other guitar players who we think of as being you know, the best um, artistically and who have the most historical value, like Jimi Hendrix, Jimmy Page, um, I'm a big fan of John McLaughlin, and then we have Carlos Santana, Steve Vai, Joe Satriani, some of the more recent players. Um, I don't think that any of them could quite match Jeff in terms of um, being able to just create an entire career just out of that lyrical solo style of playing. Every other musician developed more um, composition, more arrangement, maybe sometimes they had vocals. Um, something about Jeff that he, he could actually justify it just being about his touch and his feel, his phrasing, his sound, and that could captivate audiences for decades just based on that aesthetic and his style of playing um and i the first time that i that i heard jeff beck it was when he, he was playing um he was playing on later with jules holland um and i think i was probably about 11 or 12 years old i'd only been playing guitar for a, a year or two and I remember watching it and um, I don't remember that much about the, the music actually, I think I was a bit young, it kind of went over my head, but I remember I was, I was watching it with, with my mum and she was saying, oh yeah, this is Jeff Beck and, um, you know, he didn't have hit records or anything like that, he wasn't on um, Top of the Pops, you know, he didn't have kind of big songs, but he was just known as being an amazing guitar player, he had a really great band. Um, and as innocent as that sounds, it actually that really kind of meant something to me because I was like, oh, that's interesting. So he forged a career just kind of as a instrumental guitar player. I mean, I didn't know anyone else who'd done that. I'd never heard of someone who 
had that as their role. So when I was developing my uh, sort of goals as a guitar player, just, you're kind of dreaming about what kind of career you, you can have when you're growing up obsessed with guitar. Um, it's interesting to know that there was this guy called Jeff Beck who actually honed a whole career out of just being an incredible voice with the instrument. Um, and um, I remember coming across that recording, it, it was when he played Rush with the Blues um, that time on Jules Holland. And I came across that recording years later, when I was about 17, 18. And by that time, I heard it again and I thought, oh wow, what he's doing is really unbelievable. And um, it seemed that Jeff Beck actually developed his voice throughout the decades, but particularly coming into the, in, this was back in the 90s, um, his whole language with the guitar just evolved so much. And he had so many different uh, sounds and, you know, he didn't always play with his fingers and the way that he would be using the whammy bar, um, the way that he would, every phrase would have a, a different contour. It seemed like the language that he developed by the time he got into the 90s and the 2000s was just even even more individual than the things he was doing back in back in the 70s. So I was really astonished, you know, by what I was hearing. And I think it it spoke to me about um, the kind of possibilities that you could do as a guitar player and that, that you could actually develop um, such a lyrical style of playing um, and that you could do that as an instrumental piece and that it could actually work. And um, I remember my dad was, you know, he would hear the kind of things I was listening to, uh, listening to lots of Jimi Hendrix, Led Zeppelin or Metallica or different kind of things. Um, and I'd often have it blaring out of, you know, the TV, you know, <laughs> in the living room. Um, but, you know, and he would pay attention sometimes, but, you know, sometimes more than others. But when I played this Jeff Beck uh, recording of Brush With The Blues, it really, really grabbed my dad. You know, my, my dad's got a very discerning ear and he really sat down and said, OK, this is something. This is really, really special. This is so artistic. This is so... Um, it, it, the 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 language that he's using the musical language you know he's not just kind of blasting through playing different licks you know he's he's really crafting every single note so my dad said right let's go and see him let's let so my dad took me to see jeff beck when he came to bristol um played at the colston hall and it was an unbelievable concert and um he opened up with um some mahavishnu orchestra material i think he played um resolution by Mahavishnu Orchestra, and he had Jan Hammer on keyboards as well. Um, and then he played a, a Day in the Life by the Beatles, and it was an incredible concert. It was great to get to see him play live. Um, and around the same time, um, I was studying at a music college in London, and one of the teachers there was um, Jeff Beck's bass player at the time, um, Michael Mondesio, um, who's a brother of Mark Mondesio, these two amazing musicians, drummer and bass player. I think they, they both played with Jeff Beck. But um, uh, Michael Mondesio, was, he was telling us stories about just how incredible Jeff Beck is. Um, and one story was that, um, I think it was during a sound check that uh, for some reason um, he didn't have his Marshall stack, he didn't have the big amplifier. I don't know why, maybe the, maybe it needed repair or maybe uh, the, the gear hadn't arrived yet. They arrived to sound check and they, for some reason he didn't have his big amp. But he said, oh, it's okay, I've got my practice amp. And he, he brought on his practice amp that maybe he just had on the tour bus or he had it backstage with him. Um, so he just plugged into the practice amp and they just mic'd that up and did the sound check. And everyone was astonished that it, it still just sounded incredible. It still had this kind of spatial quality and depth around the notes um, and I heard um, Rick Beato actually talking the other day about the same thing that um, in a sound check uh, Jeff Beck said hey let me just try my practice amp for a minute and it still sounded incredible so you know maybe he sort of wanted to see if he could do it again you know <laughs> um, but I really I remember that that really stayed with me the fact that he was able to play in such a sensitive, dynamic way with just his hands on the instrument that even with a practice amp, he still had uh, an incredibly uh, graceful and beautiful sound with that depth and the, the kind of space around each note that he created. 
something that perhaps only Miles Davis, uh, you know, Miles Davis plays trumpet, but the type of musicality where each note has a kind of magical space around it, that's something that Jeff Beck and Miles Davis really have in common. Um, and I did actually, um, I didn't, I can't say I met Jeff Beck, but I made eye contact with Jeff Beck um, one time at Ronnie Scott's in, in London. Um, I was actually there seeing John McLaughlin play, this was back in 2017, and actually made another video about that, how I, I met John McLaughlin, um, and that really changed my life. Um, and I saw Jeff Beck was at the gig, um, and there was this little moment when I, I was standing by the bar, and I suddenly I looked up, and the, the club was quite empty by this point, most people had left, and then Jeff Beck was standing, like, just at the end of the bar, near, near the door, um, he looked like maybe he was waiting for someone. Maybe he was waiting for his his girlfriend or something who was maybe talking to someone. But but he was kind of just standing there, just minding his own business. And um, uh, and I I made eye contact of you know we made eye, sort of clocked each other. And I, I and I thought, well, God, that is Jeff Beck. And I sort of smiled at him. Um, and I just kind of got the feeling, well, just just leave him alone. You know, he's he's out. He's seeing John McLaughlin. Um, He's out because he wants to hear the music. It's quiet now. I could have gone up and spoken to him, but it just felt like just give the man some respect. You know, I mean, it was clear you could tell from his reaction that he knew that I had spotted him and he just looked a bit shy and a bit sheepish. And I thought, that's fine. I just let him have a nice evening. You know, he doesn't need to have everyone going up to him all the time. And, um, but I do. I, I do remembering that just just the other day that it it was, it was cool just to feel that. That it, yeah, because he is a real giant. You know, it was amazing. Just to, just to re remember that just for myself. You know that, I was actually that close to him. <laughs> it was pretty special. But it's nice also just to you know have a bit of restraint and just let people do their thing. You know. If it was maybe if if it was someone else, if it was like Jimi Hendrix or John McLaughlin, then you know I kind of have to talk to you. But with Jeff Beck, I kind of feel like I just give you some respect, give you some space. It's not your gig; it's someone else's gig. You're not coming here expecting to speak to fans. You just want to have a nice evening. Um, but yeah, I mean that's about all I've got to say, really. I, I mean, you know, I, I could go on and on, but everyone is, is, you know, everyone knows how incredible he is. Everyone knows it was listened to him that. Um, his touch, his phrasing, his timing, his tone, everything about the guy. And, and his, his sound was so kind of human. It was so sort of exposed, you know, and he played everything perfectly, but he also sounded kind of natural and almost like vulnerable at times. There were almost moments where you felt like it wasn't all nailed down. Like there were moments where it felt like he was like he could make a mistake, but then he never did, you know? It was almost like you could hear when he was actually pushing things, he was on the edge of his seat. You know, he was really at the edge of something, but then he always seemed to manage to make it flow and always come out in the right, on that note in the right way, you know? But it didn't feel, he wasn't like a machine. It wasn't like everything he did got boring because it was so perfect that you just never doubted. There are moments where you're looking like, oh, is he, is he going to manage? And then he does. He always, always managed, you know, but he was doing things which were, you kind of thought, are you actually going to pull that off? Because that looks really difficult, you know, because they were so detailed and uh, such a particular touch was needed. Um, or he'd be in the middle of doing an incredible phrase, you know, with the whammy bar, like every different pitch being chosen and then kind of moving around you know using his fingers in un unusual ways and but that was the excitement of, of it that it, al it always felt like um there was a real freshness to what he was doing it, it was perfect but it was fresh and spontaneous at the same time and that's a very very difficult balance to get um so just to finish off this video um i thought i would include um, Jeff Beck's performance of Ness and Dorma played live um, and I'm not going to try and analyse it right now I might actually come back to it later to analyse it because it would be great to start doing some more breakdowns of Jeff and really show my appreciation for all the detail that he put into his playing 
but I'm going to include this um, just for everyone to have something to listen to now and uh, just marvel how incredible he was and um, to take on this piece as well as famously sung by Pavarotti I don't really think many other guitar players could have actually done this and it would felt justified to take on a piece of this magnitude it, it must be one of the greatest compositions of of the 20th century if not of all time it's it's such an iconic powerful emotional melody you know sung by an opera singer and to do that on the guitar but actually for it to feel like it's that it works and that you've really justified and it doesn't sound like you've um uh, lost the essence, you know, it, it, to do that and to actually really capture the emotional delivery of the piece and to phrase everything. I'm not really sure anyone could have actually pulled it off, but Jeff Beck has done it. So this is a great one to remember him by. Um, so thanks very much for, for watching. Um, I hope that um, you guys just in, enjoyed sharing some different memories of different moments of looking at Jeff and then being inspired. And I'm sure a lot of guitar players have got similar feelings about from his example to seeing that it's actually possible to create your own style. And that's about all I can say for now. So thanks so much for watching. And let's end with Jeff Beck, Nessam Dorma.